What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question four of the sixth grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that Jim and Ed are trying to solve this equation, two-thirds times some number that they call m equals one-fourth. Jim states that m is equal to two and two-thirds. Ed states that m is equal to three-eighths. And we're asking which statement is true, and our answers are just all kinds of mathematical jargon mumbo-jumbo. So in order to do well on a question like this, we need to know how to work with equations and also how to divide fractions. All right, so I want to start by looking at this equation. Two-thirds times some number equals one-fourth. And if you saw uh, many of my videos for the third, fourth, and fifth grade math questions, um, you know that one thing that I would almost always use to solve an equation like this was the idea of a fact family. The idea that if I know that two-thirds times some number equals one-fourth, then I know that one-fourth divided by two-thirds equals that same unknown number. So that's the strategy that I'm going to use for this one. Um, the strategy that I would normally use is to say that if two-thirds is multiplied by m, we have to divide by two-thirds. And that's essentially what this is. But I would prefer to use the same language that I've been using. Uh, because I think that if you've been keeping up with these, it's a little more familiar, and it's also more familiar to me. Um, so anyway, if I want to take one-fourth and divide it by two-thirds, now what I need to do is I need to use my keep, change, flip method. Now, if you are a fan of Kentucky Fried Chicken, you might be getting very hungry right now, but we're still doing math, so don't go get your, your, uh, your bucket or whatever they sell just yet. Um, because when I see my K, K stands for keep, and that means that I'm going to keep one-fourth the same. When I see C, that means change, which means I'm going to change dividing into multiplying. And then I see F, and F tells me to flip. So I flip two-thirds over into three halves. Now, three halves and two-thirds, I'll just make a quick note up here, because it's a word that came up in some of our problems. or some of our answer choices, multiplicative inverse. The idea of a multiplicative inverse is exactly what we just did to 2 thirds to change it to 3 halves. All right, so now let's go ahead and figure this out by multiplying across our numerators and denominators. 1 times 3 is 3, and then 4 times 2 is 8. So here's our answer. Our answer is 3 eighths. Now, unfortunately, we can't just circle one answer and be done with it, but we can knock out two and two thirds and two and two thirds. So now we need to look and see which answer choice, C or D, best matches the process that we went through to solve this. Ed's answer of three eighths is correct because he multiplied one fourth by two thirds to get his answer. Well, we didn't multiply one fourth by two thirds, we multiplied one fourth by three halves. So it's pr probably not C, but let's look at D. Ed's answer of 3 eighths is correct because he used the multiplicative inverse, okay? By multiplying 1 fourth by 3 halves, that looks right to get his answer. All right, so A and B can't be it because the answer was wrong. C can't be it because we, they didn't show the right numbers that we multiplied. So our only answer left is D because that's ex Ed's process is exactly our process. Ed used the multiplicative inverse, changed 2 thirds to 3 halves, and multiplied 1 fourth by 3 halves to get his answer.